So in the last video, we went over kind of some of the concepts of the ideal gas law. Uh, for this one, we're just going to do some of the mathematics and, and we'll cover the concepts as well. But um, I wanted you just to have kind of a formal equation and um, some of the, the variables, what they mean. So go ahead and copy this stuff down. Um, just remember your units to keep those straight. So pressure should always be in pascals, volumes be meter cubed. Uh, a lot of times they give you um, liters. So just remember one meter cubed is gonna be 1000 liters. Um, this is our constant, uh, ideal gas constant 8.31. And this is going to be your temperature. Just remember, our temperature needs to be in kelvins. You also sometimes see the equation written like this. Um, in this case, n is the number of molecules, whereas this one, little n, is going to be the number of moles. Uh, remember, one mole, the relationship between those two, is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, and then you'll have your Boltzmann's constant, which is 138 10 to the negative 23. By the way, see if you can find a relationship between this, this, and this. So anyway, let's go ahead and do an example problem. And as usual, why don't you take a few minutes to see if you can go ahead and solve this on your own. All right, so I went ahead and sketched this out here. Um, here's our volume, pressure, temperature. Remember, um, we do have to convert to the units we need. So they gave us two liters. And this is then going to be 0 0.002 meters cubed. They gave us 1 atm. Remember, 1 atm is equal to 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. And then they gave us Celsius. Remember, 0 degrees Celsius is going to be 273 degrees Kelvin. So just make sure you're in your standard units uh, before you go ahead and try to solve it. So this one, to find the number of moles, we're just going to simply use our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, right? And then we'll just go ahead and substitute in those variables that we got. So our pressure was 1.01, .01, 10 to the fifth. Our volume was 0 0.002. Our number of moles uh, is what we're looking for. Constant is 8.31, and then the temperature is going to be 273. Notice if you did not convert that, you would have gotten a zero there, which would have failed. So let's go ahead and solve for the number of moles. When you solve that, plug it in, you should get about 0 0.088 moles. So in question B, we are doubling the temperature and holding the volume constant, right? So our new temperature, we'll just call this TB, our new temperature is going to be double our old temperature. So we had 273. We're going to go ahead and double that. That's going to be, what, 546 degrees Kelvin. We're going to hold that last volume constant. And that has a name, by the way. That's called an isochoric process. So our volume is still going to be 0 0.002 meter cubed. Um, so what you could do, you could just go ahead and plug it into your PV equals NRT again um, and just change your temperature and so forth. I'm going to do it more at the conceptual level. If you look at our equation here, PV equals NRT, right? If we are going to hold volume constant and double the temperature, so this is going to be times 2 over here, well, hopefully you can see that's going to have to also double the pressure. So my pressure at point B should be twice my pressure at point A. Okay, so in other words, if at A it was uh, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth, this should be 2.02. .02. Actually, if you allow me, I'm just going to go ahead and round it to a nice single digit. 2 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So this was, uh, let's go ahead and label these. This was letter A, right? So is letter B. Let's go ahead and do letter C now. So letter C says the volume is now going to be cut in half and the pressure is going to be constant. So this is called an isobaric process when we hold the pressure constant. So the volume's cut in half this time, right? Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing that I did. Let's just do it conceptually again. So it's letter C. So we'll just do PV equals NRT. So this time pressure is constant, 
um, our volume is going to be cut in half here, right? So if our volume is cut in half, pressure is constant, that means our temperature will also be cut in half. So our new temperature, we can call this T at C, well notice that's going to go back to our 273 degrees again. Okay, uh, let's just label these. So PC um, is going to be constant, right? So in the last problem we had 2 times 10 to the fifth, and our uh, volume in C it was cut in half. So that just went back to our point zero that went to point zero zero one. So lastly, letter D. Let's pull this down. Letter D. We're now going to double the volume, and we're going to hold the uh, temperature constant. This is called an isothermal process. Again, PV equals nRT. So this time our temperature is going to remain constant, and we're going to double the volume. So this is going to be two times. We'll notice if the volume is doubled here, we're going to have to reduce that pressure by one half in order to hold this whole thing constant. So our pressure is going to be cut in half. So again, we can write this out. So our T, we'll call this TD, that's going to stay at 273. Our P at D is now going to be cut in half, so that'd be 1 times 10 to the fifth. And our V at C, uh, we just doubled that, right? So that's now going to be 0 0.002 meters cubed. So I'm not sure if you noticed this, but let's go let's go look at what happened way back here at the beginning. Let's compare the beginning and the ending here. So here was what we started with, right? At the very beginning, we had 0 0.02 volume, 1 times 10 to the fifth, and 273. Notice what we ended with, 273. 1 times 10 to the fifth, 0 0.02 volume. Huh, that's interesting. We s ended where we started. So this is actually as a name, when you end where you start, this is called a cycle. We've just gone through a cycle and we ended up right exactly where we started. Now this is going to become more interesting as we move forward. So let's look at the math in this problem another way. Um, it's pretty easy to um, do this conceptually when you know the temperature is doubled or the pressure is halved or the volume is doubled whatever but what if it's they, they just simply say the temperature is now 500 degrees how does it change and so this is slightly more difficult but um, let's just kind of derive a generic relationship that we can use um, to solve this problem um, kind of rigorously so we have our PV equals nRT, and in this case, let's just say this is P1, V1, and T1. So this would be kind of our initial conditions. And then we could have a PV equals nRT, and in this case, we'll say uh, these could be different pressures, volumes, and temperatures, right? What is going to be the same is the number of moles in our uh, ideal gas constant. So if we kind of rearrange this, you can see this is going to be P1, V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. And this is just kind of an, a generic relationship between um, when we're changing variables, pressures, volumes, temperatures, whatever. And when we hold something constant, then you know it becomes even easier. For example, um, in letter B, we, the volume's constant, so this V and this V would be the same and would cancel out. And you just have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So for example, using the numbers of the problems, this would be 1 times 10 to the fifth divided by 273 equals P2 divided by 546. Okay, and you can see when you do that, you're going to get the P2 of 2 times 10 to the fifth. All right, so obviously in this particular problem, it's probably not worth it to do this. But again, if they, they're giving you um, numbers that aren't nice, like double or triple or half or something, you might want to go about it this way. All right, so the very last thing I want to do is look at the concept of this problem. Um, so let's just kind of look at what's going on in this situation. So we'll start out with um, our cylinder. Okay, here's our cylinder. And initially, we had um, 
the atoms inside here, right? And they're moving at a certain speed. Okay, moving along. All right, so that'd be our initial condition. And then what we did, let's go to the so, so we'll call this A. And so at step B, we changed things a little bit. Uh, the volume stayed the same. The thing that changed was we heated up the um, the gas. And so this is gonna be moving faster, right? So if we double that temperature, if we increase that temperature, well, these atoms are gonna be moving faster. They're gonna slam against the walls harder. And when they slam against the walls harder, that's gonna increase the pressure. And that's what we saw happen, the pressure increased. So we'll call that letter B here. Let's look at um, C. So in C, what we did is we decreased the volume. So here's the volume. Okay, let's just cut it in half. Maybe we'll half the height. Okay, now this one is a little bit tricky to see. We wanna keep the pressure the same, right? So we want that pressure to maintain its value. So in order for that to happen, we need to slow down the atoms. So we want the, the, it to hit the walls just as much here, but since we've now shrunk the walls, if it was going the same speed, the pressure is gonna be higher. So we want the pressure to stay the same, and so what we have to do then is decrease the temperature. So the atoms themselves would actually slow down here if we maintain that pressure when we cut it in half, and that's what we saw, the temperature was also cut in half. So then this would be uh, letter C. So in letter D, what we did is we changed the volume back. Okay, we maintained the temperature. Okay, so the temperature is the same, but what's gonna happen then? Well, if we now increased the volume here, um, and these are still moving the same speed, they're gonna hit the walls less frequently because there, there's more space for them to move around. And so now we go back to the initial pressure. And you can see actually here, again, A, I know the drawing kind of disappeared. I don't know why this got skinnier, but this is supposed to be the same volume, the same speed, and the same pressure, same temperature. So all those things would be the same in that case. And again, this is what we'd call a cycle. So we started with A, then B, then C, then we ended back up at D.